Hey everyone, my name is Brad Plymo with Eco Engineers, and I'm really uh, excited to be a part of the Sea Change Conference. As a proud Iowa State alum, really, really happy to support the efforts uh, on the discussions of why we're missing the boat on biogas and renewable natural gas. We're going to talk today uh, briefly about uh, the potential RNG markets, some of the values, and really how you participate in, in these various markets. Just a little bit about uh, myself and Eco Engineers. Uh, I'm a civil engineering graduate of Iowa State, and uh, I lead our renewable natural gas line of business at Eco Engineers. And a little bit more about the company is uh, we're renewable energy consultants. Our goal is to help build out a clean energy economy. And we work for a wide variety of client types and a wide variety of uh, low carbon pro projects. Uh, what we found is it, our services boil down into these six areas and, and a successful renewable energy facility um, from thought to development to construction to startup and to generating uh, the fuel or the credits uh, can be boiled down into one of these six areas. We do a lot of training and education. We educate uh, and engage uh, with regulators. We measure the carbon intensity score. We'll talk a lot about that uh, later. We support asset development. Um, and then when the project is built, we can register the, pro the projects into these various programs and help with the compliance management and also with the auditing capabilities. We're really not, you know, we're going to talk about renewable natural gas today, but we're not dedicated to a single fuel type or low carbon source. We work across a lot of different fuels, ethanol, biodiesel, RNG, uh, renewable hydrogen, renewable diesel, and a lot of uh, emerging fuels as well. Uh, we work all across a lot of different technologies. We'll spend most of the time here talking about anaerobic digestion and, and biogas. We also work across uh, a lot of the various regulations. Our goal really is to help these facilities match up and place their RNG into the right markets from a value, from a risk, and from a term perspective. So just briefly on the history and the evolution of biogas, of really biogas uh, historically may have been flared, no beneficial reuse at all, started to use that as thermal heat in boilers, uh, evolved to generating power or uh, electricity and power in a CHP application. The trend to these RNG projects has really been to go to pipeline quality um, oftentimes as, as vehicle fuel, and we'll talk about why that is the case here shortly. So just briefly, what are some of the markets? We really have divided this into two areas. We have transportation fuel usage. There's a lot of, of credits and programs that support renewable natural gas as a transportation fuel. And we have other voluntary market programs um, that use the, the RNG as, as thermal heat. To touch base on the programs available for use as transportation fuel, the federal renewable fuel standard is the big one. Really, if you use uh, RNG as transportation fuel anywhere in the lower 48 states, you can participate in the renewable fuel standard and generate RINs under that program. RNG can qualify for two different types of RINs, um, and we'll talk a bit more about that as well. Another option, a very, very big option, is the California Low Carbon Fuel Standard. A lot of fuels have really been wanting to participate in that program as the LCFS credits are at all-time highs in value and has really been, a, been driving a lot of fuels to, to, Cal, to the California market. The nice thing about sending that fuel to California is you can generate the LCFS credits and you can also stack the RINs on top of that. The LCFS is a state-based program and the RFS is a federal program. So you do get to participate in both of those for the same volume of fuel. Similar to the LCFS is the Oregon Clean Fuels Program. Not quite a, as high a value um, as the LCFS is, but growing in, in demand and growing in value. Uh, a, a smaller market as well, but another option, uh, state specific being in Oregon. One thing to note is you can't generate Oregon CFP credits, LCFS credits, and RINs at the same time. You'll have to choose which market the fuel is dispensed in. If that's in Oregon, you can do the CFP and RINs. If it's in California, you can do the LCFS and RINs as well. 
An another one is the uh, British Columbia renewal, renewable and low carbon fuel requirement. It's a mouthful. Um, also uh, a transportation focused pro uh, program with the goal to reduce uh, emissions from the transportation sector in British Columbia. Um, not as much activity from a US-based uh, RNG production standpoint because you don't get the federal uh, RFS or the RIN credits to go to be associated with that. But it is another outlet and another market as transportation fuel for, for RNG projects. And then we see a lot of emerging and interest in expanding uh, various LCFS type programs. The Puget Sound in Washington has a similar uh, type program. The state of Washington has been trying to enact an LCFS type program for the last several years, but just hasn't been able to quite get it through the legislative process. Uh, the state of New York is actively looking at developing and implementing an LCFS, which would be a big, uh, you know, big uh, boost for, for these markets. It's a big population area, state of New York. Other areas like the state of Colorado, uh, the Midwest has a collection of states that has been talking about and exploring what would a regional program look like uh, for an LCFS type program. So we see a lot of growing demand right now, primarily uh, RINs, LCFS credits, and CFP credits um, that are available to RNG projects, but we do see that expanding here significantly over the coming years. Aside from uh, use as transportation fuel, there's a, been a big growing demand for uh, RNG in, the, in these voluntary markets. And what do we mean by voluntary? Really any non-regulatory driven program. So what we're looking here is at utilities, industries, Fortune 100 and specifically Fortune uh, 500 companies looking to go out there and buy RNG to be used to satisfy sustainability goals, corporate initiatives, um, voluntary green programs. Uh, just a couple of years ago, the, uh, there wasn't much activity. Um, there wasn't many buyers in these, in these voluntary markets for renewable natural gas. That's expanded greatly over the last several years. And we, can, we really think this is a big growth area for, for the industry because of the sheer number of players and the sheer volume of natural gas that can be consumed with these entities. The big one I mentioned, you know, utilities. Many of these utilities want to green up their uh, pipeline. They also want to provide their customers with the ability to purchase renewable natural gas instead of fossil-based natural gas for their uh, home heating. So what the pro this voluntary green program would give you and I the ability to selectively, you know, and voluntarily purchase, spend a little bit more money and use green um, RNG in our house instead of fossil-based fuels. So we see that as a, a rapidly uh, developing uh, market and opportunity for RNG. Industries as well, on the production of their products, wanting to use renewable energy sources, lower carbon uh, sources of, of thermal heat and process energy in order to lower their, the emissions lower the carbon footprint of their facility and of their product. And I mentioned Fortune 100 companies, really specifically the larger uh, tech companies, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, Apple, all looking to power their data centers, their fleets, uh, their facilities with renewables instead of fossil-based fuels. Um, Amazon re recently announced that they have a goal to, be, to replace 100% of their energy consumed with renewable sources, and then also to get to net carbon zero emissions, which more and more companies are considering that and having goals to either use renewables at a minimum or to get towards uh, carbon neutrality. Universities are also a big one of using as thermal heat, the, you know, the dorms, the buildings, all of those are big consumers of fossil-based uh, natural gas, especially in the wintertime buying renewable natural gas to reduce their emissions, reduce their carbon footprint is a trend we see continuing um, well into the future. So those are the core markets that we've seen. You know, how do you participate in those markets? If, if we're here and you know, our, our office is based in Des Moines, Iowa, if uh, we're working on a project here in Des Moines, how does a project in Des Moines take advantage of the California program, the Oregon program, or a Canadian program? or maybe sell a voluntary 
um, make a voluntary uh, deal with somebody in Canada or in New Me or in uh, Mexico. And so what, how that happens is uh, you, RNG is uniquely positioned to take advantage of displacement or oftentimes called book and claim accounting. And really what that allows is if you inject into the uh, natural gas grid, a pipeline, then that pipeline is connects the entire United States. Actually, all of North America is connected by the same grid. And so injecting the uh, gas, let's say you put 1000 MMBTUs of, of renewable natural gas into the grid here in Des Moines, you could off take that an equivalent amount of renewable natural gas anywhere that's connected to that same grid. So in that example, maybe we wanna work a, a contract with the San Diego bus system. So we'll inject 1,000 MMBTUs in Des Moines. The San Diego bus system will withdraw an equivalent amount of that 1,000 MMBTUs uh, in San Diego. And we have a contract together that really completes the circle of being able to generate those LCFS credits and of the, and of the RFS uh, RINs. And why is that the case? Because the natural gas grid is really treated as a big sink or a big storage tank. So gas going in in one location, it's very common and it's industry standard that you can withdraw an equivalent amount anywhere that's also connected to that grid. And that really positions RNG uniquely above liquid fuels like ethanol and biodiesel, where they have to physically ship the or rail uh, the fuel to the destination that they want to consume. Really uniquely positions uh, RNG to take advantage of many of these programs without having to ship the molecules um, to the source. And I won't go into uh, all of this, but all in those markets, all of them have different values. And how do you decide where you want to place your RNG? A lot of times it's market driven, but you typically want to target the highest value markets. And that really depends on what's your feedstock, what type of RNG are you producing, What's the carbon intensity score of that facility? So how efficiently are you producing that? All of those factors will determine which markets you may be able to participate in and also what the value is. You can see here, we have three RNG sources, a wastewater treatment plant, um, biogas from a wastewater treatment plant, um, biogas and RNG from a food waste digester and biogas from uh, dairy or swine manure. You can see the big swing. In this case, all of these three, the physical molecules are worth the same amount of money. But the ability to pay for the renewable or the environmental attributes, the green attributes of this uh, product can be monetized in many different ways. The reason for the dairy and swine being so low is those types of facilities are actually net zero. So they reduce carbon emissions from the atmosphere because in the baseline scenario, most of those are using an open lagoon where anaerobic digestion is happening. The manure goes to the lagoon, digestion happening, methane and CO2 is directly being emitted into the atmosphere. And by covering that lagoon or installing an anaerobic digester, you're getting the credits for stopping that and beneficially reusing the product. So you get a, a one-two punch of, of uh, being able to reduce, uh, have a net uh, reduction of carbon by doing those projects. And those projects are uh, rewarded with a higher and higher value. So the big trends that we see in the RNG markets, a lot of manure-based projects, especially dairy and swine, um, because of those higher values. We see food waste projects, a little bit lower value, a lot of those types of projects are going more towards the voluntary market. And then we have some intermediate type of values where in this example, uh, RNG from a wastewater treatment facility has somewhere in the $30 per MMBTU range. But you can see here, again, the value of the physical gas molecules consistent across and a very small portion of the overall value here. So what you have to do is you have to consider all of these factors. You have to look at your project independently, analyze each one of these market opportunities, figure out what the value is, what the risks are associated with each, what's the term length uh, for placement of gas into those. And then you may have to find somebody to help you, an offtake party, 
place that uh, gas into these various markets. But I think one thing that we see uh, is a very common trend. There is more and more demand for renewable natural gas out there. So we see growing voluntary markets, um, many new emerging LCFS type programs at a state and at a local level. We have the renewable fuel standard. So the, the future is very, very bright for renewable natural gas. Thank you for taking the time to uh, watch this and hope you learned a little bit more about some of the markets available to renewable natural gas projects.